Knowing that I'll be casting some large parts in the future, I needed a much bigger crucible. As large clay graphite crucibles are expensive, I decided to see if I could use a stainless steel mixing bowl to melt the aluminium in. This bowl from Tesco had a rubber base that would need to be removed. I decided this would be a good opportunity to try out the blowtorch. After a quick blast with the burner, the rubber base just crumbled apart and could be brushed off with a wire brush. Putting the bowl to one side, I went about setting up the mini metal foundry bucket furnace thing. The bowl has quite a large internal volume so I decided to try heating it from below using charcoal and above with the blowtorch. So the bowl wasn't sat directly on the coals, I used the mesh from a disposable barbecue as a platform for the bowl to sit on. Once the furnace was up and running, I could start putting some stuff to melt in the bowl. The heat from the blowtorch was enough to demolish the cans in seconds. Here I'm preheating some anodized aluminium offcuts. I didn't even bother taking the tape off as it gets burned off and scooped out with the rest of the dross. It takes a while for slightly bigger pieces to melt, but once they start, they disappear quickly. Somehow the pool froze. Obviously there was not enough heat from the charcoal alone to keep it molten. There's a lot of dross produced from melting cans. I decided to pour the first batch of ingots. Unfortunately, I seem to have also decided not to film it. Now on to round two.
so typically this is when my camera died and I didn't notice. The mesh had sagged and the bowl had become directly in contact with the charcoal. The intense heat punched a hole in the bowl and most of the aluminium leaked out. This rendered the remaining charcoal into a large smelly paperweight. I managed to rescue a bit of the aluminium but the day's output was disappointing. It turns out thin steel crucibles are pants. I finally caved in and ordered a clay graphite crucible. I'd like to say I carefully calculated the correct size. The reality is I bought the biggest crucible I could get my hands on quickly which in this case turned out to be an A20 crucible capable of holding 4 litres of metal. For now I'll just have to try it out and see if it is big enough. The crucible needed to be tempered before use. To do this I heated it in the oven for an hour to drive the moisture out. Putting it into the new furnace, I then slowly ramped the temperature up to over 800 degrees C before leaving it to cool down again. You can see here why people on YouTube don't typically use blow torches to heat their furnaces. There isn't enough airflow, so I had to rig my hair dry to blow air in through the holes at the back of the torch head. This doesn't work very consistently. I think I will replace this eventually with a proper furnace burner. Now I have the crucible, I need the tools to lift it and pour it. To make a pouring hoop, I started by grinding the paint off of this steel pole salvaged from a gizmo used to train the splits. I'm a rickety old fat git now, so I probably don't need it. I made a hoop from some thin one inch wide steel bar from B&Q that I bashed the crap out of. I couldn't get my stick welder to work, so I settled for using screws and jubilee clips to attach the hoop to the pole. Here I'm quickly trying it out and I realise I need the 90 degree handle thing at the back on the other side so I can tilt the crucible with my right hand. The screws I used have a square shoulder, so I had to file a square hole to be able to tighten them. This wasn't the greatest idea when working with steel and took absolutely ages. Thank you. 
Here the hoop isn't very circular, so I had to persuade it to fit the crucible. These are my makeshift lifting tongs. They are literally just a cheap keyboard stand whose ends are hammered into a curve. Here I'm trying to pre-burn the paint off before using these tools, but to be honest it didn't seem to make much difference. I also blasted a few bits of grass and blew some holes in the concrete. Tools made and crucible tempered, we're good to go. A friend gave me two cast aluminium fire extinguishers that I could melt down. All of the aluminium I've got so far is either from extrusion or from cans and therefore not great to cast with. I thought I could melt these fire extinguishers down and throw some of the cast aluminium in with the pure aluminium and help it cast better. Unfortunately these fire extinguishers seem to be covered in some form of rubberized paint that is virtually indestructible and is presumably the stuff they paint black boxes in so they survive plane crashes. Burning the rubber made a lot of smelly smoke, so I wouldn't recommend melting fire extinguishers if you like your neighbours. Here I'm just poking about to see if the aluminium has softened yet. And it's softened too much. I've now got a blob of aluminium embedded in the bottom of the furnace. Knowing how much smoke the first fire extinguisher generated, I thought I'd see if I could remove the rubber paint. I could not. I also thought I'd try and cut the fire extinguisher down a bit. However, without a sensible worktop and advice, I decided to abandon cutting it up in case I severed an artery. The rubber paint eventually became dross that could be scooped off the surface of the molten aluminium. This is one of the big problems of the mega metal foundry design, well, aside from the zinc fumes and exposed KOL fibres. There's too big a distance between the top of the crucible and the top edge of the furnace. This means to put anything into the crucible while it is running either requires long tools or you have to drop it in from above, which can be quite scary. I made it this tool because I knew I had the fire extinguishers to melt. I may cut it down now so there are only a few inches of clearance between the crucible and the lid. 
This will also make it more economic to run. One of the many hazards of this furnace, and possibly other people's, is that when you open the lid it tends to blast a big flame out. I've now learned to open the lid by angling it first, thus directing the flames away from me. Interestingly, the second fire extinguisher seemed to be able to melt without producing too much smoke. I'm guessing this is because it was sat in the pool of molten aluminium which would have caused it to melt faster and would also have smothered some of the oxygen. Right, so this is the first time trying out the lifting tongs and pouring hoop for real. First mistake is that I placed the crucible in the hoop with the spout pointing at 90 degrees from the main pole or 9 o'clock from my point of view. If you notice when I pour the metal, because the pole is slanted downwards, 9 o'clock is not the closest point to the ground. Second mistake is that I have not strategically placed the ingot trays. You need to be able to walk freely around them when pouring. This was the first time using the larger muffin tin and as such all the teflon coating had to burn off. But because I had put it in a silly place I was trapped in the smoke until I could finish the pour. I was coughing my guts up all night after that. Now you can see me correct the mistake of the crucible alignment. It is at 10 o'clock and the spout is now the lowest point to the ground. There was actually a couple of inches of metal still left in the crucible after these pours, but it had solidified before I got to empty one of the muffin trays. Since I've just moved house and currently don't have my own garden, I'm using my mum's garden. There she is, warning me not to melt my sister's special bucket. Hi mum. Right, finally got that video edited. I'm going to bed. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you later.